So, we've built this, we've set it up, and of course now it's time to print something. Choosing what to print, that's not an easy option for me for the first print, because it has a job to do. Of course I've got to demonstrate the capabilities of the printer with something that will challenge it, I don't want to take it too long so that I can report back on how the printer actually did. I want it to be useful to me in a project and I don't want to, to use an awful lot of filament in case it does go wrong and I have to redo it. Now that's been an issue with people. They've been saying that it's a big printer, it's going to use a lot of filament and that's perfectly true, it is. But that's not because it's a big printer, that's because you're printing big things. I mean, if you're printing something like little robots sort of, you know, benches that are like that big, tiny little one cubic centimetre, of course you're not going to use much filament. But you're not using much filament because it's tiny. When we print something big, we're going to be using a fair bit of filament. And the filament I've chosen is this Anagu Rapid PLA Plus. They did send this in the pack as it happens. It came with the printer. It's a free kilo. But... This um, Rapid Plus by Elegoo, uh, Rapid PLM, sorry, by Elegoo, is, is one of the most inexpensive that's out there. It's about 14 or 15 pounds a roll, a kilo, on, um, on Amazon. And I did look at getting the 5 kilo spool, but oddly enough, the 5 kilo spool was more expensive than 5 1 kilo spools, and I found that a bit weird. But we're going to use this um, Rapid PLA Plus to print something. And the question then is, what are we going to print? Well, I don't know if you remember this. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, look at that. That's incredible, actually. Look at that. Wow. Jeez Louise! <laughs> That's amazing! Okay, so that was video 2012 if you want the full details of the build. And I figured that a single blade would match all the requirements we've got because it's quite tall. If we fill this volume with it, that top bit is going to show up any jutter that this might have at the top. And of course, I can use it to build a massive wind turbine, which I'm really excited about, but the blade itself takes about 11 hours to print, something like that. And if it does go wrong, well, it's not too much of a hassle, it's a single blade. So it seemed to fit really well to do that. Now, there are three ways of getting a file onto this. I want both bother showing the showing the Cura, because I've done it loads of times, and it's identical. Just load up the STL file and slice it with the printer settings you're away. The first way to get this is through a USB, and the USB port's right there. I favour sneaker net, I favour USB, it's probably because I come from a different time when the internet really wasn't very good. But you can also wire this up with a hardwire line, so you can put it onto the network if you've got a local network, and it also has Wi-Fi. We're going to do USB transfer, as that's just what I favour. If you favour something else, knock yourself out. Okay, let's load up some film. So these things are pretty much always the same, again, big of it doesn't really matter. Stick your filament roll on your filament roll holder, pass the filament through the brake sensor, and then take it down to your print head and feed it in the little hole in the top. From your home screen, press prepare. There we go. Choose PLA, it will automatically heat everything up. When you're ready, then you're going to press load, and the filament will feed through. And it will extrude out. Slice your SDL file in Cure and save your G code file on your USB and then just stick it in there. Go back to the main screen, press print, and there it is. And we can print it. <laughs> okay, so we'll come back in 12 hours and see how it's done.
So we're 10 hours into the print, it's about 70% finished. I'm actually here so I can hold this bit of the frame and feel how it's shaping. And it's not vibrating very much, to be honest. As I look at the print itself, there's a little bit of vibration. It doesn't seem to be affecting the surface of the print very much. Now, I do a lot of this structural stuff. Maybe this shaping would affect it if you would been something that had to have a fine finish. I don't know. But we'll wait till this is finished printing, take it off and have a look at it. But it's doing really well. And being a blade, of course, it has quite a small footprint and it's having no trouble holding itself onto the bed. It says it's got about another five hours to go. Let's leave and find out what happens. And there it is, finished. Now, I did go to bed last night, but nervously, because of course this top bit here is the bit that was most likely to go wrong as it jerks backwards and forwards and this wobbles backwards and forwards. But I didn't get up to something that looked like a food fight in a spaghetti factory, so I'm really quite pleased. Let's take it off and have a better look at it. Okay, that's it taken off. I mean, that's enormous, that's a monster, it's really quite impressive. I went and got the original one from 2012 so that we could have a comparison between the size. And of course that did really well, this is going to be incredible. Now it did take about 14 hours to print. On the slicer program it said 11 hours 51 minutes, in reality 14 hours. So it was a bit longer to print it actually. And I do still have two more to make, but I wanted to redo this, see how it did, and then report back. Now, when it comes to printing up there, that surface finish is actually lovely. We started to get a bit of judder from about there to there, and a little bit of ghosting from here to here, because this is really at the top when it's shaking at its most. But it's pretty acceptable for what I want to do, because of course I'm doing constructional things. This is going to be a wind turbine, and it's going to be a monster of a wind turbine when I get the other two blades done. But 14 hours, it's going to be another 28 hours just to finish the blades, and then we have the rest of the components to make. So a little while before this is actually built, but it's quite impressive that you can make something like this with a beast of a machine like the Orange Storm. So I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out, actually. Uh, and in summary, well, the Orange Storm is one of those things that... Um, you're going to have to have a job for, really, and when you want to make large parts, then it's going to be pretty nice to do it, particularly if you maintain this kind of level when you're going to get a nice finish and you want anything else, you're going to have to look at maybe bracing it or um, changing the orientation or something like that. But it is a really awesome machine. I had absolutely no trouble with it, to be honest. Uh, but then I've only just done one print with it, and we'll see how it goes over time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.